had a hat so that I put it on and start from there. It's really an honor to be doing this and to have really, in a sense, been part of the conversation about trying to bring this idea of um, cultural, uh, digital cultural hobnob of awesomeness to our continent. And five years later, after we had that first conversation, here we are. So kudos to all of you. I'll tell you that. <laughs> It's also really worth celebrating that this, despite all that's happening with digital or the world today, opportunities, especially for Africans to meet, are rare. And even rarer opportunities for us to meet on our own soil. So kudos to the representatives from South, Southern Africa, from Eastern Africa, from Western Africa, from Central Africa, from Northern Africa, and friends of Africa. You're welcome. <laughs> Awesome. So as you heard, my, uh, my name is Nanjira. Um, I would say in a s one sentence that I work on understanding how the excitement around the world of technology ports with the realities of our context. Um, I don't mean to uh, you know deflate anyone's bubbles with a few things I will point out today here, but I think we have to be very uh, real about what we are talking about when we imagine the next level of Africa through digital and all that. So I'm just going to try and share a few things around my thinking about the basics we must carry forward as we go towards the idea of the next level. Um, first, I think well, nowadays when you're talking about the future of Africa, a lot of it obviously is around the youth and we've all grown up being told we are the future, we have everything that we need to make it happen, um, and so, you know, that kind of sort of like carries us and is a wind beneath our sails, so to speak. But the truth is more complex than that. Um, we are also told that, you know, the, the, what's happened has happened. And in fact, in Swahili, we have a saying, Yaliopita Sindwele to Gange Ajayo, which basically means, you know, the past is, it's happened, it's what it is. Let, never mind, let's keep going forward. Yet, the more you try to go forward without factoring in what has come before. The more you find you're removed from any true anchoring and true foundation, and I think this is particularly true for our continent. The Africa rising uh, style of optimism really had us think that we should just cancel, forget. In fact, if that part of your brain you could switch off about everything you know that's not worked, or what has worked in the past, just take the technology, run with your blockchain, run with your AI, run with your app and fix Africa. Um, it's become a very uncritical, yet very popular narrative that we ourselves have started embracing and also our friends from other parts who are interested in seeing the success of Africa have also come with. And I just want to encourage, as we're here for two days, to start using the sessions to, to, to challenge that. Ask why that's the case. Why are we being forced to think that there isn't a past? Why is it there's a narrative we're running from that makes it sound like we're without context? We are without histories. Um, another thing I want to think uh, you to think about is the ideas and ideologies that we are leveraging for this digital futures we want to unlock for the continent. I want you to challenge yourself in, especially those who have some tech-enabled startups, why it is you have to call it the X of Africa. X being the Silicon Valley equivalent of what sector you're in. So you're the Uber of the, I don't know what what of Africa. Why is that? Why, we want you to challenge that external locus of validation that we must seek. But I also have to challenge our friends from abroad who come with that narrative as well to give us a, st a space to actually shape our own narratives. We can ask nicely, we will continue to, but we don't want to have to always um, have points of conflict so that these points are understood. It must not take um, a magazine abroad finally saying Africa rising for us to all sing around Africa rising. But that is an ideology contest, and we have ideologies from our history, some good, some great, some bad, that we need to learn from so that any solutions we're putting in, any investments we're putting in onto this continent actually fit this whole idea of the sustainability. If I challenge you five years ago to think about the technology flavor of the season, it may have been the blockchain of the day, it was probably open data for some folks, it was the apps, we were building apps for everything. We were building apps to replace politicians. We were going to replace apps was it. And here we are. How many apps on your phone do you use? Shout. How many? Uh -huh. ah, yeah. So now we are at this blockchain, baby. Blockchain going to solve it all. Just put it on the blockchain. 
put it on the blockchain. Um, we <laughs> there are fantastical dreams you're placing on these technologies, and we have to challenge this notion that each technology that comes is the one. Forget the one before. You know, that is the one. You have to start asking what is it we can learn from the five or so years of apps and blockchains and it, internet of things and mobile phones that has not unlocked this future so that every year we have to pump ourselves with the next level narrative. We have to go back to the basics and think about that. Let me quickly point out what I think those basics are so that I've not sent you off with homework without uh, leakage. Um, <laughs> first is the whole idea of how digital infrastructure is perceived in our governmental settings. We are only now starting to see that our governments are understanding that investing in the requisite infrastructure in the ICT space is no longer a luxury, which is slow progress, but progress nonetheless. We are in reality still at a point where, as of 2019, um, half the world will be connected to the internet, but of the half that is not, a majority of them are on our continent. We are in a reality that, um, yes, these technologies that we have in our hands, mobile phones and all that, um, you know, we'll talk about how, you know, M-Pesa's revolutionized this or whatever equivalent is from other, we really need other examples, by the way, other than M-Pesa in life. Um, but women are also left behind. Very few women have these devices in their hands. We have the challenge of um, thinking that this narrative that Africa is a mobile first continent, a mobile only continent, is the way to build for this continent's infrastructure and next level. But I challenge each and every one of you to think about what, what's the limitation of what you're able to do with your mobile phone? Because on the other hand, we keep telling people, okay, code, coding is the basic, um, is the basic literacy of the 21st century. Who has coded on their mobile phone? Please, we must meet you today. <laughs> uh -huh. Let's challenge this imagination that everything is being built for the mobile phone because we are creating a continent of consumers limited through the ways they can create. We have to start being critical of that. What does it mean to have a world where all we have on our hands are mobile phones and the, the things that have to go into the mobile phones, the devices we need for that are elsewhere or the price points are not feasible for us to have. We must challenge that notion that we are always being done for. And we must also make sure that the limitation is not just somebody comes, gives a TED talk about how they're building with Africa, they have to be held to account for that. So uh, the last thing I want to say is that also challenge yourself in the sense that all these things are interconnected. The world of tech is fantastical in trying to get us to think that it's all about your expertise in that topical issue. But it's about the arts because when we say we want to see creativity, it's about what the spaces of the humanities and the arts have cultivated in your style of thinking, in your style of argument. You can't, you know, um, you can systematize things through the robot, you know, robots, but that creativity that creates the robot is still there. So arts come in there on that front. The whole idea of the businesses we're building, this narrative that we came from Silicon Valley, move fast and break things, has to stop because we are breaking societies in the process. We have a responsibility, especially on this continent, and especially of those who are working with us on this continent, to realize that just because it's worked there, it does not mean it has to work here. And more so, just because it works in Accra, doesn't mean it will work in Kumasi. So we must not always think about scale as the ultimate. It's, you know, if M-Pesa worked in Kenya, it's there for surely must work because all blacks are same. That is not how it works. We are going to have to have critical conversation about how scale works in a very diverse continent. How do you solve for that? Is it on the blockchain? You let me know. But just the long and short of what I'm trying to say is challenge every assumption you have about the technology you're working in, the domain you're in, and challenge yourself while here to go to at least one track that is not your domain or you don't think is your domain. Go come see, for instance, how people who try to run for office thought that the digital technologies would really get them the votes, and they didn't. So that you can understand, you can build the best civic up since kingdom come. But the politics of the political will, what there's no app to fix how we think about our politics. Come challenge yourself about the fact that governments have frustrated us. No lie, that is the case. But we still need the state as it exists to hold our interests um, and for us to contribute to what our collective interests are. Go and learn about different ways of thinking about business. Go think about, um, you know, what also has not worked. Because sometimes with these narratives, we really want to say everything has worked. 
we don't always have honest conversations about why things did not work. Challenge yourself to really think about that. So that this next level we're building for, we are actually starting on the right foundation. There's this, those of us who are gathered here belong to that generation that has been given so much pressure. There's so many things that the cans have been kicked down the road from different generations. And here they are on our, foot, uh, you know, on our footsteps with these technologies. And we definitely want to walk them, uh, make them work. But let's challenge every a fundamental assumption we bake into that. Last but not least, to our friends who have joined us, thank you. We are very happy. Now, in how you partner with us, please, please allow our views, our perspectives to shape that. Challenge yourself to let that be the case. We cannot afford to keep having every generation miss the mark. I don't know about you, but I feel the pressure every day as a Kenyan, as an African, that we have to get it right. So we cannot use the move fast and break things things because our societies are broken. We are trying to heal them, we're trying to fix them with these technologies, with these ideas. Let them have a chance. Allow us to also teach you a thing or two. Ladies and gentlemen, go back to basics for the next level. Thank you very much.